In at number 10, Paris Hilton's Boarding School. In 2020, Paris Hilton opened up about her traumatic childhood after keeping it a secret for most of her life. In her documentary, This Is Paris, Hilton alleged that she'd been subjected to toxic and harmful treatment while attending Provo Canyon School in Utah, which was a boarding school for troubled teens. Hilton revealed that while she was there, she would be isolated in solitary confinement for no reason and be forced to take pills that made her feel numb. Paris and her entire family kept this a secret for her entire time that Paris was a socialite and an A-list star. Along with her difficult childhood, Paris also exposed that her voice was faked and she made it sound higher to play into the dumb blonde stereotype. And at number nine, Joan Crawford. Back in old Hollywood, they didn't have the beauty products that we have today, and actors were forced to use alternative measures to look their best on camera. Actress Joan Crawford took this to the extreme and admitted to soaking her eyes in boric acid every week to make them, quote, sparkle on camera. She exposed this years later in her autobiography called My Way of Life. When talking about this beauty regimen, Crawford said once a week she'd steam her face, apply a mask, and soak her eyes in boric acid, casually instructing, quote, while the mask is working, place pads soaked in witch hazel and boric acid over your eyelids and put on your face favorite music. Obviously, this was an extremely bad idea that could have made her go blind, but she risked it all just to look better. And at number eight, The Black Box. We are just now scratching the surface of the horrific things that child actors had to endure in the days of old Hollywood. Sadly, one of the punishments adults on set would use when a child actor misbehaved was putting them in a thing called a black box. This was a closed in box where the actor was forced to sit on an actual block of ice as punishment. Shirley Temple spoke of this box in her autobiography and called it an exploitation of her childish innocence. In her book, she said that if any child on the set of Baby Burlesque Smith behaved, they were locked in a windowless sound booth dubbed the Punishment Box, where they'd be forced to sit on a block of ice. Temple was sent to the box several times in her tenure as a child star. Temple added, quote, far as I can tell, the black box did no lasting damage on my psyche. Its lesson of life, however, was profound and unforgettable. Time is money. Wasted time means wasted money means trouble. And at number seven, Jackie Cooper. Stories like this are so horrible, I truly hope this is still not happening happening today. Actor Jackie Cooper shared a terrible memory of when he was working on set. While he was filming the movie Skippy, Cooper was not able to make himself cry. So the director, who happened to be his uncle, threatened to kill his dog if he didn't cry. Norman Turog, the uncle and director, left lasting trauma on Cooper. In his autobiography, Cooper said about the situation, quote, I began sobbing so hysterically that it was almost too much for the scene. Turog had to quiet me down by saying perhaps my dog had survived the shot, that if I hurried and calmed down a little and did the scene the way he wanted, Wanted, we would go see if my dog was still alive. Cooper ended up earning the nomination for Best Actor in a leading role for his performance in 1931. He was just nine years old, and he's still the youngest nominee ever for the award. And at number six, morality clauses. Back in the day, the studios basically owned the actors that they signed, and they made them sign their life away. Once they became an actor for a major studio, the actor totally belonged to them and was not able to make major life decisions without consulting executives. Many of these clauses forced female actors to stay unmarried, so they were more marketable to men. Others even forced women to terminate their pregnancies so they would not waste any time that could be spent filming. The studios claimed that these clauses were to quote, prevent stars from destroying their value through scandal. Stars like Lana Turner, Judy Garland, and Jeanette McDonald were all held to these clauses and they would disguise the hospital visits and claim they were for ear infections or other minor treatments. Halfway number five, closeted LGBT plus actors. To continue along the lines of morality clauses, another use of those clauses were to closet LGBT plus actors, even forcing some of them into sham marriages just to keep up appearances. This part of the clause revolved around not, quote, forfeiting the respect of the public. If the actor breached this part of the contract and had a relationship that was not approved, they would risk losing their entire salary for the role. Also, if the actor was outed, that would mean the end of their career either way. Gay actor Rock Hudson's struggle with his identity was revealed in the biography, All That Heaven Allows. In that book, it was exposed that a magazine planned to out him back in the day. At that time, Hudson's agent was the only person who knew the truth and proposed that he get married to squash the story. Hudson immediately married Phyllis Gates, but they divorced a couple years later. The secret stayed with him until days before he passed away. And at number four, Buddy Epson. Back in the days of old Hollywood, the makeup and prosthetics weren't what they are today. And oftentimes the costumes that the actors would wear would be toxic. One fact is that the Wicked Witch's green face in The Wizard of Oz was made with toxic paint. And Buddy Epson, who was supposed to play the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, did not do so because he had an extreme reaction to the aluminum dust 
from the makeup. Because of this reaction, he was replaced in the movie with actor Jack Haley. Epstein was ultimately hospitalized and forced out of Oz's production. For years after the movie, Epstein claimed that the makeup caused permanent breathing problems for the rest of his life. And at number three, Jack Nicholson's sister was his mother. This one isn't really related to Hollywood, more so a secret that a Hollywood actor kept for a number of years. Jack Nicholson kept a huge secret from the public almost his entire life, mostly because he didn't know the truth until he was an adult. His entire life, Jack was raised with a sister named June, who was 17 years older than him. But when his parents died, Jack's older sister revealed that Jack was actually her child and her parents raised him as their own to hide the stigma from a young pregnancy. And Jack's parents were actually his grandparents the whole time. And at number two, Rihanna's father had a second life. Rihanna has spoken in the past about her tense relationship with her father. Throughout her life, he was addicted to alcohol and cheated on her mother essentially their whole marriage. But one day a horrible secret was revealed and apparently the entire time he was married, Rihanna's father had a second family. He had three other children as well, two daughters and a son. At one point, but Rihanna was even forced to sue her father because he was selling services involving her name and likeness, although she later dropped that suit. And finally, number one, hidden children. Being a movie star means that you need to be perfect 24 seven. That includes hiding pregnancies from the public or trying to make them go away. Celebrities like Kylie Jenner kept her pregnancy totally a secret until after the birth to ensure the media did not affect her. However, there are tons of celebrities who completely hid secret love children from the public. Aerosmith's frontman, Steven Tyler, had a secret child well in his heyday, so he and the mother decided to hide the paternity from the child. When Liv Tyler was eight, she found out the truth and so did the media. Apparently she was forced to put the pieces of the puzzle together herself when she could no longer ignore the resemblance she had to the singer and his other kids. In the number 10, Mafia Connections. Back when Hollywood first started, it was rumored that mobster Mickey Cohen ran the Hollywood underworld. Back in 1950, it was apparently a known thing that Cohen ran many organized crime units in LA. And over the years, it's been revealed that a lot of big old Hollywood stars had connections to the mafia. Even singer Wayne Newton had a connection to the mafia, and it almost ended up costing his life. Newton was apparently friendly with Guido Panossi, who was a member of the Gambino crime family. But Newton claimed he had no idea that he had mob ties. Then in 1980, there was a lot of scandal around Newton and the Aladdin Hotel that was co-owned with mafia members. Rumors swirled that Newton was talking to police behind their backs. Then Newton was put on a witness list to testify against the family, which got him a legitimate threat against his life from the mafia. Thank God he was able to survive the ordeal. And at number nine, ageism. Getting older is a fact of life, but in Hollywood, they want to avoid it at all costs. And specifically for women, getting older means the end of your career. It's so bad that actors even try to hide their ages so they can play younger roles. Actress Junie Hoang sued the website Internet Movie Database for revealing her true age to fans. Actress Jessica Lange has defied this ageism and has success in her 60s, but she admits it was more difficult as she got older. She said in one interview, quote, ageism is pervasive in this industry. It's not a level playing field. You don't often see women in their 60s playing romantic leads, yet you will see men in their 60s playing romantic leads with co-stars who are decades younger. In at number eight, fake fans. In the age of social media, followers are everything. And having tons of followers can mean the difference between getting the part or not. But sadly, a lot of these followers are not real. And it's been exposed that millions of social media followers are fake and are purchased to make it seem like the star is more popular. Some of the world's most popular celebrities are a part of this. Some of the worst offenders are Ariana Grande with 46% fake, Taylor Swift with also 46% fake, and Miley Cyrus with 45% fake. It's worth noting that the celebrity is not always responsible for the fake followers, but they usually are. In at number seven, all press is good press. We've all heard the famous saying, and it seems that celebrities don't care if they're getting good or bad press, they just want to be talked about. People might not know it's actually a PR strategy to get bad press. Sometimes the negativity helps to sell something or it can take attention off something else. One example of this was back in 2014 when it was revealed that Kim and Kanye were going to be on the cover of Vogue. At the time, Kim was not a fashion icon and people were outraged. Some readers even threatened to cancel their Vogue subscriptions, calling Kim a disgraceful and inappropriate for the iconic publication. Anna Wintour ended up going forward with the cover and it was one of the most talked about issues of all time. We're not sure if it was all for press, but the negativity definitely helped to sell magazines. And at number six, body issues. Looking perfect is something that all celebrities struggle with, but having the perfect figure is sadly something that the industry forces you to have to be successful. Many celebrities have come forward to share their stories of disordered eating, which was called 
caused by Hollywood bigwigs saying that they weighed too much. Even agents and managers have told a star that they need to lose weight in order to be cast. Former child actor Raven Simone admitted on The View that she was told at age 7, while starring on The Cosby Show, that she couldn't eat certain things because she was getting too big. This experience caused her to have a lifelong struggle with food. Demi Lovato has also been open about their eating issues. Demi remembered that when they were only 3 years old, they hoped that their stomach was flat. People are now fighting back against these standards and advocating for more body positivity in Hollywood, but it's a long road ahead. Half point number 5, Scientology. Scientology is a mysterious religion that happens to have a ton of A-list celebrity followers. It's been said that the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, used celebrities because he knew that they would attract followers to this new religion. This is also the reason that the Church of Scientology has a huge luxurious building right on Hollywood Boulevard. In the 1950s, L. Ron Hubbard created the quote, Project Celebrity, a written program that offers rewards to Scientologists who bring in some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Today, some of Hollywood's biggest stars follow Scientology, including Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and Christy Alley. Apparently, these stars are rewarded with Butler-esque employees to do anything and everything for them. Former high-ranking members spoke out against this, claiming that they saw Tom Cruise use underpaid Scientology workers for years. In at number 4, Gender Pay Gap Yet another example of Hollywood being harmful to women is the gender pay gap between men and women in movies. And unfortunately, this still exists to this day. This issue came to the forefront in 2013 when the movie American Hustle was released. The movie showcases huge movie stars, but unfortunately was exposed that the female actors received less than their male counterparts. An email hack revealed that Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams received two points less on the revenue sharing agreement than their male co-stars Bradley Cooper and Christian Bale, despite the fact that both actresses are A-list actors. Around the same time, Meryl Streep, the actor with the most Oscars ever, came forward to say that even she was paid less than her male co-stars. House of Cards actress Robin Wright also said that she needed to be paid as much as Kevin Spacey or she would go public against Netflix. And at number 3, Animal Cruelty When making a movie, it's imperative that nobody is hurt during the production. This includes animals, and it's common to read, quote, no animals were harmed during the making of while watching a movie. But according to many reports out of Hollywood, that's not always true, and animals are often harmed on movie sets. Some of the worst examples include the near-drowning death of a tiger during the filming of Life of Pi, the hitting of a dog on the set of Eight Below, and the dozens of dead fish and squid that washed up on the shore over four days during filming of the Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The second season of the HBO series Luck was actually cancelled after four horses died during the production. Apparently, they were overworked because the production wanted the horse racing to look as real as possible. The people on set also ignored warnings from humane animal monitors on the set, making it clear that they didn't care about the animals. Unfortunately, this loss of life had no repercussion. In at number 2, Hollywood Fixers It's long been rumored that bigwigs in Hollywood will hire fixers to do the dirty work for them. These are basically tough guys that will swoop in and do the dirty work that these powerful people can't get caught doing themselves. This idea was brought up again because of the series Ray Donovan. Back in the days of old Hollywood, where stars would sign their lives away to movie studios, it was common to have these fixers to deal with personal issues. It was rumored that these men would cover up pregnancies of their young stars, along with making accusations against powerful men go away. And these practices still happen today. A fixer named Anthony Pelicano was arrested after it was discovered that he sent threatening notes to celebrities along with a dead fish. Pelicano was allegedly employed by stars such as Michael Jackson, Chris Rock, Kevin Costner, and Steven Spielberg. And finally, at number one, the Illuminati. The Illuminati might be the most elusive group in Hollywood. Nobody is quite sure who they are, but everyone is pretty sure that some of the top celebrities in the world are a part of it. Most notably, Beyonce, Jay Z, Tom Hanks, and Lady Gaga. The subject of the Illuminati was brought to light again recently after David Dobrik did a podcast interview where he spoke about his experience with the Illuminati in Hollywood. He told the story to Zayn and Heath on their podcast where David revealed that a girl that he knew was approached by the Illuminati, and she was told she needed to sacrifice someone to them if she wanted to get famous. Apparently, this girl called her mother, who was okay to be the one sacrificed, but the girl did not end up going through with it. Months later, David and this girl were at a Hollywood party with old Hollywood A-listers, and when the topic of the Illuminati came up, the girl told the group about how she was approached, and one of the A-listers told her not to get involved with them because the Illuminati ruined his best friend's life. Apparently, this A-lister's supposed best friend was Michael Jackson. And at number 10, Fake Relationships 
I think at this point it's clear that most Hollywood relationships are faked for PR. Occasionally these fake relationships actually turn into real love, but most of the time these fake couples split as soon as the movie comes out, making it painfully obvious. One of the most obvious cases of this was the on and off again relationship between Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart during the Twilight days. These two would always be in a relationship when their newest movies were dropping, but then a few weeks after the release, they would break up. Since they split almost immediately after the final Breaking Dawn movie was released, it's clear that it was all a lie. Also, the pair looked so uncomfortable when they were together, and now that we see what they look like in a happy relationship, it's clear that they weren't in one. And at number 9, Paid Paparazzi if you've ever wondered why some celebrities look amazing in paparazzi photos, well, others don't, it's because a lot of celebrities hire their own paparazzi to make sure they never look bad in a photo. The most recent celebrity to get called out for using this tactic was Addison Rae. While Addison was out in New York, she happened to get a ton of great photos of herself out and about in the city, and Page Six called her out for tipping off the paparazzi about her location so she can get a ton of good pictures. Page Six called it, quote, a move straight out of the introductory course at the Kardashian Institute of Advanced Fame Grasp. Apparently, Addison specifically wanted good photos of her outfits so that she could become known for her style. This move has long been used by the Kardashians back when they were up and coming, and now it seems that Addison is taking tips from her new friends. And at number 8, Fake Bodies. It's no secret that almost everyone in Hollywood has had some work done. Usually it's minor things like Botox and fillers to maintain youthfulness, but some celebrities went through major changes before making it big, and these cosmetic procedures were the reason that it all happened. Apparently it's an open secret that celebrities will change their bodies to adapt to the times to maintain marketability. But the worst part is that most celebrities don't own up to these big changes, so fans will think these people are effortlessly perfect and it starts to impact the everyday person's self esteem. One of the most common procedures seems to be a nose job, and most celebrities Celebrities that are deemed au naturel have had it done. Blake Lively, Scarlett Johansson, and Jennifer Aniston are just some of the celebrities that fans are convinced had nose jobs, but they will never admit it to fans who think it's all elite genetics. In a number seven, award show corruption. Many fans assume that Oscars and Grammys are given to those who truly deserve it, but once you pull back the curtain, that's really not how it works. And an open secret is that anyone who wants to win one of these awards must campaign for it and basically bribe the judges. This can be in the form of actual money, or things like vacations and expensive gifts. Back in 1981, actress Pia Zandora won the Best Newcomer Award for her role in the movie Butterfly. It was a shock to everyone, until it was exposed that her husband paid off the voting members to ensure that she won, and over time the practice did not get better. In 2011, publicist Michael Russell sued the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for firing him. He was trying to expose the corruption with the award show, and they didn't like that. The party settled the dispute out of court. And at number 6, cheating. Movies often take months to film. That's long, grueling hours away from family and friends, stuck with the small same group of people. Because of how it all works, movie sets are breeding grounds for extramarital affairs, especially if you're spending a lot of time with your love interest in the movie that you're hugging and kissing all day on set. There are truly too many examples to name, but there's a solid chance that one of your favorite actors cheated on their spouse during the filming of a hit movie. The most famous are Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Kristen Stewart and director Rupert Sanders during the filming of their project. And obviously, this this happens a lot more than it's reported. Halfway number 5, Fake Names the vast majority of Hollywood A-listers do not use their real names, instead they concocted a stage name. This is done for a variety of reasons, sometimes just because their old name isn't as flashy, but other times the reasons are pretty dark. For some examples of celebrities with fake names, Martin Sheen's real name is Raymond Antonio Gerard Estevez, Jamie Foxx's name is Eric Marlon Bishop, and Marilyn Monroe's real name was Norma Jean Mortensen. Then other times a name change can be used to hide nepotism. Like for instance, Nicolas Cage's real name is Nicolas Coppola, and he's the nephew of Francis Ford Coppola, a famous Hollywood director. This familial connection landed Nick Cage his first role in the movie, Peggy Sue Got Married. Other times, a name change can be to hide racism. Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actor Chloe Bennett, real name Chloe Wang, said, quote, Hollywood is racist and wouldn't cast me with the last name that made them uncomfortable. In at number 4, stuntmen regularly lose their lives. Stuntmen are a very common thing on movie sets, because A-list actors aren't able to do the stunts that we see in a lot of action movies. But fans might not know what a dangerous job that it is and stuntmen regularly get critically injured or even lose their lives. And for how vital their role is to these movies, they are not paid fairly. The average stunt person pulls in about 250 k a year, which sounds great, but is nothing compared to the about $20 million that the movie stars are making. Big name stars are obviously the ones that sell the tickets, but they're not the ones who put their lives on the line. During the filming of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double David Holmes got hit by a staged explosion, and he was so seriously injured 
injured by the fragments that he suffered a neck break that left him fully paralyzed. Then on the set of Deadpool 2, a stuntman lost their life during a car crash scene. In at number 3, Substance Misuse. Following the release of the biopic Judy, we got to see the horrible practices the movie execs would use to get their talent to do what they wanted, specifically using illicit substances to wake the actors up and keep them on set working for very long hours. According to a 1982 New York Times article, use of these substances became so common that movie insurers would put clauses in their contracts to cut losses from these sorts of incidents, because several deaths and injuries on set stem from the use of these substances. In her 2013 memoir, Debbie Reynolds, the female lead for the 1952 musical Singing in the rain, recall that when her grueling schedule started to take a toll on her health, a studio executive told her to quote, take vitamin shots from his doctor. Then Judy Garland revealed her mother would give her quote, pep pills to ensure she had enough energy to film all day. Because of the toll these substances took on her health, Judy unfortunately passed away at the age of 47 because of an OD from these substances. In at number 2, inappropriate behavior runs rampant. So I'm gonna have to dance around the subject a bit for this one, but the things that have been exposed during the Me Too and Time's Up era are not new and have been happening for decades. Harvey Weinstein wasn't the first and only power player in Hollywood to use his power to get women to do what he wanted. And this all goes back to the idea of the quote, casting couch, where you are expected to do favors to these executives in exchange for a role. And there are many examples of this behavior taking place in Hollywood. Even worse, this behavior can also happen against one study even found that 94% of women employed in the American film industry have experienced sexual harassment or worse. This is a staggering number that should make everyone push for change. And finally, number one, discrimination problem. The problem of diversity in Hollywood is something that's being brought up more and more over the years. And when we look at some of the stats, it's pretty wild. Only one woman has ever won the Oscar for Best Director, and that was Catherine Bigelow for the 2008 movie The Hurt Locker. Also, only one African American has ever won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay in the history of the Academy. That was Jordan Peele in 2018 for Get Out. But the problem is not only in the cast and crew of the movies, it's the higher up of the business in general. A 2016 Washington Post investigation reported that 96% of Hollywood's decision makers were white and 87% of them were male. Clearly a large gap between those demographics and what we see in society today. A study of 100 movies released in 2016 also showed that about 70% of speaking roles in that year's top 100 films were white, leaving 30% to account for black, Asian, and Hispanic people. Another shocking stat was that just 31% of speaking characters were female. 